for us this evening. Uh, tonight, we will be focusing on the gospel lesson that is established for this coming Sunday. And it is recorded for us in chapter 24 of the Gospel of St. Luke and verses 13 through 35. So Luke 24, verses 13 through 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord is risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. And as we consider that gospel lesson from our Lord Jesus, uh, it's intriguing to hear that these disciples just didn't recognize him at first. They didn't get the path that they were supposed to be on. They were going the wrong way. I've always loved a painting that was in my house when I was a kid growing up, and I found another copy of it years later, I think at a garage sale, and this is the copy of that print old and kind of faded, and some would say, well, that's not the highest level quality artwork, but it really means a lot to me, because it's a picture of that afternoon of Easter, and the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, with Jesus there, and he's pointing up to the heaven and explaining to them what's going on. Anyone ever seen a copy of this print before? It's kind of popular in Lutheran circles in the way back when days, I know I saw it in a lot of the homes where my parents were growing up and where I grew up, uh, a lot of the houses had this one, but haven't seen it too many places since. Like I said, it's not the highest quality artwork maybe, but it's very meaningful to me. In that moment of discovery, when Jesus says, have you not heard this is what had to happen? That the Son of Man, the Son of God, had to suffer these things that he had to go through the cross. He had to go through hell so that he could take away all of our sin. And uh, then he explained how all the scriptures pointed to him. Oh, what I would have given 
to have been there and heard that from Jesus that day, where he gave him the crash course in a couple of miles walking time of everything that the Old Testament had said that was pointing to why this had to happen. That would have been awesome. Man, I could have gotten a lot of sermon material out of that, I tell you. Um, better than anything I've ever preached, guaranteed, from Jesus himself explaining how it all fits together. But the thing that really strikes me about that story and that account is uh, how they still didn't fully get it. They didn't recognize Jesus until later. As they were at the house at the ending of the day, and what event took place that finally opened their eyes? Breaking of the bread and the distributing of that bread celebrating the supper again with them that he had instituted on the night before he was crucified. In the breaking of bread, in that fellowship together, they knew who he really was. Jesus still reveals himself in that same way to us here in this supper. It's a precious gift that helps us to know who he really is and what he came to do to give his life so that we could have life that will never end. And uh, we thank God that Jesus has opened our eyes now to see the power of this sacrament and to see what all of the Old Testament was pointing to, to him as our Savior. What's that have to do, though, with our life? Well, an important part of it is, one, we have forgiveness from him. It's a gift guaranteed because of what he did, that he went through that cross and grave for us. Rejoice in that, absolutely celebrate that gift of forgiveness. And we're on our way to heaven. We know we're going to be with him for eternity. But what about from here until we get to that place where we're with him for eternity? Are we on the right path? Or are we, like those two disciples on Easter afternoon, scratching our heads and wandering the wrong way? Well, haven't seen Jesus. Don't know if it's true. Heard some crazy rumors from the ladies, but we don't know. Guess we'll go on back to Emmaus, where we're from. And so they're trudging down the road back on their way home. Going the wrong way. Going away from where they should be, where Jesus would be again for them. Do we ever get off on the wrong way? Because we miss the directions that Jesus gives. We've missed his signs to us. Sometimes we miss it, and this is a big reason why these disciples missed it, because Jesus came in a way they didn't like. His way was a way of suffering and death. They didn't want to hear about it. When Jesus was alive and they were traveling with him and learning from him, he spoke about his coming death. They didn't want to hear about it. In fact, Peter told him, no, you can't die. That's not going to happen. No. And Jesus had to say, get behind me, Satan. You're, you're getting in the way of what God's plan is. They didn't want to hear it, and so they kind of made themselves deaf to it. Have you ever put a deaf ear to God because he challenged you to go somewhere you didn't want to go? Maybe it was into a role of service you didn't really want to do. Maybe it was helping that person you really didn't want to help. Let them take care of themselves. We've been talking about that in the Bible study here on Wednesday nights. Uh, Christy Hansard, our deaconess, has been leading through a study on helping those who need help. And sometimes we miss the opportunities. We don't want to take the opportunities. Sometimes we get focused on ourselves and are more worried about ourselves and can't see what's going on around us. These disciples were a prime example. They missed what was going on because it wasn't fitting their model of what it should be. And it could well be that they were on a dead-end path. They were heading for nowhere good. You ever uh, headed down a street and you got to the end and you weren't familiar with it and you saw the dead-end sign? Have to turn around, go back, frustrating, waste of time. It can be even more dangerous if there's no sign marking the dead-end ahead and you run into something not so good. So getting on the right path. Sometimes it's not easy. And sometimes we resist it because it's not the path I chose for myself. I want to go here. I want to 
this, I want to do that, or I want what I think will make me happy, what's going to make me enjoy my life to the fullest. That seems to be a mantra that so many people have is, what's going to be the thing that makes me happy? I deserve to be happy. I deserve to have the best things. Do we deserve that? Do we deserve to be happy? Not if you listen to what the Old Testament says and all those prophets that Jesus was talking about. I'm sure as he talked to these disciples on the road, he would have said, you know, um, the prophets warned that Jesus would have to die because you're all sinners and you've messed up and you need a savior. You are not able to save yourself. You can't get yourself to heaven by your own power. The Lord says the same thing to us. We aren't perfect. So he has to warn us that we can't save ourselves. And we don't like to hear that either. We want the easy path, what makes us happy, what makes us feel good about ourselves. So to hear this message of us being sinners who fail, sometimes we don't hear that either. So the Lord comes to us through his word again and says, you are a sinner, but I have a better way. I've forgiven you. Receive the gift. Get back on path. Come on back on my way. He also says, my way, not going to be an easy way. It's going to be rough at times. Some uphills, some potholes, just like Michigan roads all year long. There's going to be some rough spots. But I will bring you through those. And those things will actually make you stronger in your faith in me, which is where you need to be. Trusting in me. And the things that I want for you, where I want you to go, it's not over there where you think it's going, that easy, happy path that you want. It's going to be a rough path over here, but boy, will there be blessings as you see what I will do, as I will work through you and use you to accomplish more than you ever dreamed I could do through you, to be a blessing to many other people to help others in need, to listen to the hurting, to care for the the downtrodden. I will use you as you follow this path over here. I pray that God will help us to listen as we're seeking his direction in life and to not necessarily look for the easy path, but to listen for his direction and to listen for Jesus as he says, I've got a better way got a good way for you. And I pray that as you find that way by listening to him, you'll find the joy that is better than the momentary happiness this world gives on its easy path. Hard path, yes. Rewarding path, absolutely. God's path, our path. May we follow where he leads, always. Amen. As we